We're now five phases down in the great battle for Bharat, that is Lok Sabha election of 2024. From the very start of this election cycle, it was very clear that there were inherent contradictions within the India alliance, between the TMC and the Congress in Bengal, between the left and Congress in Kerala, and of course within the AAP and the Congress in Punjab, because these are parties that are often competing in these states. Now, some of that was expected, some of that is natural when you have such a large and disparate coalition of parties, some amount of contradiction is expected. But now, the India alliance seems to be crumbling under the weight of its own contradictions and nowhere is it more evident than in Bengal. Today, TMC supporters blacken the posters of Congress President Malikarjun Kharge. There is open and public sparring between Mr. Kharge and Mr. Adhiranjan Chaudhary on the role of Mamta Banerjee and the TMC within the India Alliance. Is the difference within the top echelons of the Congress party now out in the open, specifically on how and how much they need to be accommodating the TMC within the India Alliance? And will the India Alliance, with all its contradictions, be able to convince the voters of Bengal, the voters of India, that they will function as a well-oiled machine that is worthy of the votes of the people of Bengal and the people of India. Arjunan Chaudhary is not going to take the decision. We are going to take the Congress party, the high command. That's why we are going to take the decision. That's why we are going to take the decision. ठीक ही आचे, हमारे विरोधी ता नैतिक विरोधी ता, कांग्रेस के को खत्म कर बे, आमिता के खातिर के उतार तो होते वाले ना, हमारे विरोधी ता मुझे कोना व्यक्ति को तो बिंदुस नहीं, हमारे विरोधी ता नैतिक विरोधी ता, हमारे विरोधी ता उस चीज़ में हमारे पार्टी के रुख का कोरा। ये कैसा आकर्षण है? और इस गठबंधन का पूरा चरित्र ही ऐसा है। All right, joining us now on the panel tonight, Nalin Kohli is national spokesperson of the BJP. Shapan Das Gupta is former Rajya Sabha member of parliament and senior journalist. Kamru Chaudhary is a political analyst uh, with leanings to the, towards the Congress party. Tosif Khan is a lawyer and political analyst with leanings towards the TMC. Let me start with you, Nalin Kohli. You know, contradictions in a coalition are not new. It was always there. You go back to the Janta experiment, you go back to the VP Singh experiment, the National Front. Uh, even when the BJP, even in Atal Bihari Vajpayee's cabinet, there were contradictions. After all, Mamta Banerjee at one point of time used to be part of Mr. Vajpayee's government. But in the India alliance, the contradictions that now, now you're seeing between the TMC and the Congress, and now within the Congress itself, between Mr. Kharge and Mr. Adhiranjan Chaudhary, why is that any more different than contradictions in coalition and coalition compulsions that you have had to face in the past. Because respectfully, Zaka, your entire question is premised that there is an alliance. First, it's not an India alliance. It's an Indie alliance. Because in the acronym A-I-N-D-E-I-A, A stands for alliance. So they've, I don't know how they coin it and call themselves the India alliance. They are basically an Indie alliance. Number two, where is the alliance? Who is the alliance? What is the alliance? Is there a leader? No. Is there a logo, a common symbol? No. Is there an office? No. A convener? No. A secretary? No. Is there a common agenda? No. Is there a seat understanding on a national level? No. So what is the alliance in Bengal? The Trinamool Congress said initially that, you know, the Congress will be less than 40 seats nationally and we'll give them two seats. Then they've not even given one. Is that an alliance? They are contesting against each other. So therefore, there is no alliance. When there is no alliance, then you can now understand, you, you have to decipher uh, the politics behind what's these statements. So that shows there are two camps within the Congress party. One that says even though Ms. Mamta Banerjee and the Trinamool has not entered into an alliance, has literally thrown us out of uh, Bengal in that sense in terms of our aspirations of having X number of seats, and said, now friend for yourselves, we still want to have uh, an alliance with her in case there is a requirement post-poll. 
or at least some kind of understanding like that. Okay. And the second camp within the Congress party is, we are the people who are fighting on the ground. We are the ones who are facing the brunt of it. Our identity is against Ms. Uh, Mamta Banerjee on the Thronobol Congress. She has put up a candidate and is fighting tooth and nail to see that the Congress does not win. We will not tolerate any kind of understanding. So this is not a contradiction only in a so-called non-existence alliance. This is a contradiction that goes within the Congress party. Okay. It shows it's not a unitary structure anymore. It shows that the regions are now speaking to the centre and saying, sorry, it doesn't work for us. Kamru Chaudhary, the problem is the two people who are publicly sparring in the Congress party, one of them is the national president of the Congress party, Mr. Malikarjun Gharge, who's openly contradicted Mr. Adhiranjan Chaudhary, who's the leader of the Congress party in the outgoing Lok Sabha. And he's openly said that it's not up to Mr. Adhiranjan Chaudhary to decide whether TMC will find a role in the India Alliance or not. And Adhiranjan Chaudhary says, how can I be expected to back those parties that are hell-bent on finishing off Congress in Bengal? Surely, I mean, I'm willing to buy to some extent, yes, all coalitions have some inherent contradictions, but literally, you know, the top two, for, for what it's worth, in the Congress party are sparring and sparring publicly over the role of one political party. How do you go to the people of Bengal and say, please vote for us? Zaka, you must understand the ground realities that is here in Bengal right now. People in Bengal want the Trinamool Congress to be out of power in Bengal. The way they have destroyed the state over the last 10 years is one side of the story. The other side of the story is the Bharti Janta Party whose governance we have seen in Uttar Pradesh, we have seen in Assam how they have brought in hate as their endless philosophical uh, weapon to rule the country and the state. So here, neither the CPM, uh, neither the TMC, nor the BJP is finding traction out here in Bengal. Now, coming to the main issue that Adhiranjan Chaudhary ji and Kharge ji had over the last two days, it has been sorted out within the party. There is no such difference between the state and the central leadership as of now. Both have clarified of their statements. The question remains, Zaka, you need to understand the formation of the India alliance as such. We needed to provide the voters of this country who are opposed to the Bhatia Janta Party and its ideology a one on fight on the maximum number of seats. And we have succeeded in providing one on one candidates in most of the seats. No, no, but However, in, in, in the Bengal, 42 seats in Bengal, in not one of those seats are, uh, is there a one on one fight between BJP and India Alliance. Zaka, Zaka, in every single seat of Bengal, it's a, it's a three, three cornered fight. You must understand in Bengal what happened. That's the question that everybody is asking Mamta Banerjee. You have named the alliance, India alliance. Who named it? Mamta Banerjee named it. But then what happened that you simply walked out of the alliance, did not provide any seat to the Congress alliance out here in the state? What was the reason that you along with Hemanta Bisha Sharma and the ex-governor of West Bengal, Mr. Dhankar, had a secret meeting in Darjeeling governor's house? What transpired no, 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 in the meeting second, the people second, of this one country second, one is second, asking. One second, one second. Oh, Mr. Chaudhary, let, let's not get too far uh, out, out. First this of all, that, meet, that, 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 meeting, that meeting was before, before the election of Vice President. It was some, some months ago, if not over a year ago. That's number one. Number two, again, you tell me, why didn't that alliance happen in Bengal? Now, one, one, one cold political explanation for it, you may, you may want to buy it or not buy it. Let me ask Sopandas Gupta this. This is what the TMC folks are saying that their explanation or their political logic for why Mamta Banerjee has decided to fight all 42 seats in Bengal and not give, let's say, if there were to be an alliance, five or ten seats to Congress and left and others, because she feels that by contesting in all 42 seats, the TMC maximizes its chances of getting maximum number of MPs in Bengal. After all, TMC is relevant only in that one state, right? It's not like TMC is going to get MPs in Maharashtra or in Andhra Pradesh. So if the TMC has to have a significant presence in the next Lok Sabha, a bulk of its MPs have to come from Bengal. And for that, there are better chances that the TMC fights 42 seats as opposed to 25 or 30 seats. No, undeniably so, Zaka. That's no doubt that was the TMC's logic and there is a certain merit in that logic. After all, the TMC has spent, having been an offshoot of the Congress, has spent the last 20, 25 years in trying to destroy the Congress. And moreover, it's a fact that the Congress is not the number three party in West Bengal. The Congress is the number four party in West Bengal. Because the number three party is actually the, the communists, the CPM. Yeah. Now, they 
have the lion's share of what constitutes the third angle of the triangle. So Mamta Banerjee was certainly not very willing to concede even a single one. So you see the entire basis on which the India alliance has been crafted at the center does not have any application in West Bengal. And it seems to be that there is a bit of a charade going on that Mamta Banerjee in any, uh, also pointed out that she was not going to join that alliance. She's going to give it, support it from the outside. That was only a couple of days ago. Maybe she's modified that statement in yeah, some she way. Did, yeah. yeah, Yeah, but what she spoke from her heart that she, she's not going to get, she's not going to go in, get, get into bed with the communists. Hmm. And that's really half the problem which they have. And the, the reason why she was keen on getting the Congress rather than the CPM on board was because she believed that the Congress has a certain hold over Muslim voters in West Bengal and, the, and a section of the Muslim voters may be having second thoughts about uh, supporting the Trinamool Congress. So she wanted a united front of that. Now, that's not happened, but she obviously feels that it's uh, she's confident enough because she believes also that it's one of her main objectives is to destroy Adit Chaudhary once and for all so that this nuisance in the Congress is ended. So these are very many local complications. Mamta Bariji is essentially a very provincial politician. Yeah. Uh, she, she cannot look really beyond the boundaries of West Bengal and she's whatever she's done in this case has been adjustments keeping in mind West Bengal realities from her perspective there's nothing more to be said than that okay I, I want to show before I come to Tosif uh, Khan uh, on, on our magic wall and this is a fascinating map it's almost like a mirror image if you were to compare what happened in the 2019 Lok Sabha election uh, the BJP had 18 the TMC had 22 uh, of course, uh, the, the Congress had uh, two and the left uh, was, drew a complete blank. If you look at the map of Bengal in the 2019 Lok Sabha, this is how the map looks like. These are the numbers which I just gave out uh, to you a moment ago. But this is how the map looks. And it's almost like, you know, two or three different states within one state. If you look at where the TMC has won a bulk of the seats, it's of course in the Calcutta and Greater Calcutta regions. And of course, in North and South 24 Pargana. So largely in the eastern part of the state, in the southern part of the state, and in the central part of the state. You look at where the BJP has won a bulk of its seats. A, a good number of the seats have come from the western belt. This is uh, Bankura, Purulia, Jangal Mahal, uh, Bardwan, the western part of the, of the state of Bengal. And of course, there's a bunch of seats in the north as well, which traditionally the BJP has has tried to do well in those in, in, in those seats. Of course, in 2019, it converted vote share into seats in that belt. So, Kuch Bihar, Alipur, Duar, uh, Jalpai Gudi, that, the, the northern belt. So, the BJP essentially got a bulk of its seats from the western part of the state and the northern part of the state. Now, if you were to take a look back in time, 10 years prior to that, in 2009, in the 2009 election, and just pay attention to the saffron portions from 2019, west and north, Look at the 2009 Lok Sabha election. It's almost a mirror image. The TMC, still very strong in the central part, in Kolkata, Greater Kolkata, South and North 24 Parganas. And if you look at where the left was, look at where the left got a bulk of its seats back then. The left got a bulk of its seats. In fact, the CPM got all 10 of its seats that it won in 2009 from the same belt, which the BJP did exceptionally well in 2019. Bardwan, Jalpaiguri, Bankura, Purulia, sorry, uh, 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 from Bankura, Purulia, uh, Jungle Mahal, this entire tribal belt, the western part of the state, and of course, a few seats in the north. So it's almost like a mirror image, what happened in 2009 to what, what has happened in 2019. So it's almost like there is evidence to show that a large part of the left vote Maybe not the left cadre, some, to some extent the left cadre as well from 2009, but the left vote certainly moved away in those 10 years from the left to the BJP. If you were to look at the map, the map is an exact replica. The BJP winning in those areas which the left had back in 2009, but the TMC continuing to hold on to those areas where it was strong, whether it was 10 years ago or whether it was in 2019. So, on that note, Tosif Ahmed Khan, if that is Mamta Banerjee's calculation, that she wants the 
left vote which went to the BJP, some of it to either go back to the left, therefore there's a political logic in her wanting to have the left in the Congress because it cuts the anti-incumbent vote. She would rather not have a direct TMC versus BJP fight because that will always be anti-incumbent because all the anti-incumbent vote then goes towards one opposition party, in this case the BJP, which whoever is the best placed to defeat the incumbent party, the incumbent party of course in Bengal being the TMC. So if that is her calculation, then she's happy with this formula of contesting all 42 seats and, and propping up the Congress and the left in those seats so that some of the votes which would, which would have gone to the BJP end up going back to the, to the CPM and to, and, to the, and to the Congress because that does not hurt her. That hurts the BJP more than it hurts her. That is right, Zaka. The 2019 result, uh, when uh, studied in detail, gave the report that a lot of C the left votes went to the BJP. And therefore, a left and Congress alliance, which was there in 2021, gave a different result. You know, if, if to, in 2019, in BJP had 18 uh, MP seats, then by that projection, they would have gotten around 120 MLA seats in 2021. But they actually got around 77 MLA seats, which showed the downfall of the, of the BJP, uh, which they had actually gained because some of the votes were retained by the uh, CPM and Congress alliance and majority of it went to Tirnamul. Even in, in the recent Panchayat election, the Tirnamul share, vote share increased close to 50%. It was 49% or so. You know, when the India alliance was formed, the main target, the main, the fundamental of the India alliance was that all the regional parties will focus locally, will uh, put up a strong fight in, in their own state, wherever they are. It was not a national approach. It was an approach that uh, Shiv Sena will focus in Maharashtra, Tindam will focus in Bengal and so on and so forth. Therefore, yeah, there's, there's, one, one, there's, one focus... significant, there's one significant difference in that. In Maharashtra, for whatever it's worth, the Sena, UBT, the Congress and the Sharad Pawar faction of the NCP have formed an alliance. They are contesting these elections jointly. They've had a seat-sharing arrangement. Whereas in Bengal, there is no seat-sharing arrangement. And, and I go back to, to your initial point. The idea of the India Alliance was not that regional parties do where they are strong. No. The initial germ of the idea that led to the India Alliance was you are able to find as many as possible, I'm not saying everywhere, but as many as possible, one singular candidate to take on the BJP. And that's not happening in even one constituency in Bengal. Yeah, but that does not hurt Mamda Banerjee. You see, in Maharashtra, the Thakre uh, is, a, is not in majority and does not have a government. But in Mamata Banerjee, in Bengal, Mamata Banerjee has a government and has a brute majority. Uh, uh, in Bengal Assembly, where only 148 uh, MLAs are required to form the government, she has 200, uh, close to 210 or 215. So the, the situation in Bengal is that only Mamata Banerjee can give a fight to BJP. Now, in order to uh, hold back those uh, anti-incumbency uh, votes to go to BJP, uh, this option of uh, Congress and left should be there. And which is rightly, you know, the, okay. the, the, so the let, scheme let in Nalan Bengal. let respond to that. I mean, this is again something that um, uh, uh, some of the, the journalists, reporters who've gone there are, are picking up that unlike in 2021, when the entire left vote and the Congress vote collapsed, it got zero MLAs. This time, some of the left vote may be coming back. And if that is the case, like I said, this is anecdotal. There is no data to show that. This data will be available on the 4th of June when we have the results. But if that indeed does happen, even to some degree, even if it is uh, a 2% swing or a 3% swing, that will hurt the BJP more than it will hurt the TMC. Because I, I refuse to believe that you know, vote transfer happens between left and TMC. There are far greater chances, and I've shown the magic wall just a moment ago about how there was vote shift that happened from erstwhile left to the BJP. So she's happy in a, in, in a way that left and Congress are there. They're propped up. They may get zero seats. They may get single-digit vote share. But whatever they get, they are taking from your kitty, Nalan Kohli, from the BJP's kitty. That's a massive uh, hypothesis based on a number of ifs and buts. I don't agree with it, in fairness. 
I mean, those who would like to see the BJP not do well, it's a democracy after all, and in a democracy, there is another side that would like to say that, no, 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 the BJP should not do as well. They are bound to build a narrative and then have a self-serving narrative that is built on, you know, looking at these kind of ifs and buts, that if this vote doesn't go there, then the BJP may come down to this. We'll leave it to the voters' discretion. We'll know on the fourth, but there's no reason or any logic to support this hypothesis. No, no, I my, just showed the logic on the, the magic left wall. It was an elaborate logic. But I'm coming, anyway, I'm coming. Ahead, I'm, yeah. building I'm building my case. I'm building my case. I'm building my case. The left is a consistently shrinking entity in terms of the political space that it occupies. It has not been able to show any kind of uh, width or, you know, being able to expand from its shrunk position, say, in Kerala or in uh, what you call Tripura, where they are uh, on really on the margins now, and uh, Bengal. So therefore, this next issue is what is their ideology? That ideology itself has shrunk to a very, very small uh, sort of area within the globe. It was pretty much in the 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, a dominant, you saw it in large, uh, you know, many countries, and it was a dominant ideology in terms of the political narrative, if not the main one. Where is it there globally? So you've seen a movement away from the left. You've seen, yes, uh, social welfare, all that, but that's not necessarily communist or Marxist. Sure. So therefore, there's, there's, uh, they have less political relevance even globally. So there's nothing to back up that the left suddenly is going to see a resurgence at the cost of the BJP. And with due respect, their left denies the existence of God in that sense. I mean, they... And in a... In a fairly religious country that we are. I mean, at a time like this, I'm just prone to find that it's amusing, to put it mildly, that the left is going to expand on the, at, the, at the cost of the BJP. Okay. I mean, this argument, if perhaps the I Congress Party was trying to say they will expand at the cost of the BJP, I may believe that that's a political no, so, narrative so, so, that, Shabhada, yes, Shabhada as an opposition party, they are in. entitled no, no, first, to make. All, but certainly second, not second, someone on the left party carefully. side. I never said resurgence. I said some of the left vote, the erstwhile See, I, left I vote, Zaka. which moved to the BJP could possibly move back. And even if 1% to 2% swing moves back, it's not going to hurt Mamta Banerjee, it's going to hurt the BJP because it's primarily the BJP's vote that will that will go back. But but be that as it no, may. But why can't we build yeah, the hype? Because, because, because a left voter uh, will never vote for Mamta Banerjee. Mamta may happen in no, the a, a left Daka, voter in? will never vote for, 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 for Mamta Banerjee. Yeah, that Dasgur. is not true. That is not true. If you recall that hmm. in, in 2021, it was the group of leftists who had no vote to the BJP campaign, which was basically trying to move away a section of the left vote to the Trinamool. But never mind that. What I'm talking about is that we are going purely by anecdotal evidence. The anecdotal evidence in West Bengal suggests that the, West, that, that the CPN is putting up an imaginative fight, imaginative <laughs> campaign around in the four or five seats around Kolkata. Okay. Nothing more than that. They are not very much present in more rural areas. And there is a belief that they will, they're, they're young Turks, you know, they're flaunting sort of Shea Guevara, and many of them have been imported directly from JNU. And so, so it has a certain innate appeal to the media, and that is why there. So the CPM might have a nice imaginative campaign, but whether that will have any resonance in, um, in, among the people of the state, among the voters, is, to my mind, a very doubtful question. And Mamta Banerjee, one more thing which has to be caught in him, I was pointing out that you see Mamta Banerjee is gradually proving to be a huge embarrassment to not only the Congress, but also to the entire ecosystem of the opposition. Her remarks today against the Ramakrishna Mission, the Bharat Seva Sramchang and the ISKCON Really, is the impact of that is not going to be confined merely to West Bengal. It's going to have a larger appeal and people are sort of outraged. You yeah. know, these are very respectable Hindu organizations and she goes and, you know, uh, goes, goes after them in a very, very partisan and silly way. And it's Mamta Banerjee is showing that when it comes to the crunch, she has really no control over her impulses and 
can say anything and will prove to be a far greater embarrassment no, to this so-called Indi alliance to, than she even was to Atal Bihari. Tawseef, I, I think that is a very, very fair point. I mean, the Ramakrishna mission has been intrinsically linked with not just Hindu culture across India, but intrinsically linked with Bengal. I mean, for a party which prides itself on being the pride of Bengal, to attack the head of the Ramakrishna mission, to attack uh, ISKCON by saying they are, you know, propaganda pieces for the BJP, you are pushing away. You are pushing away a, a big chunk of voters. The situation, there were reports that one, uh, you know, one uh, Mr. Maharaj, I'm forgetting his name, had said that he will not allow... Oh, Mr. Maharaj, uh, any, he has a name. Any, he has a son. Yes, I'm forgetting his name. Uh, Don't yes, just yes, call I'm him Mr. Maharaj. Maharaj. Kartik Don't Maharaj. Kartik Maharaj. Like Maharaj. Yes, no, no. This is not an insult, Mr. Sapan Dasgupta. I, I think you did not please hear me. Please call him in clear. the proper way. No, no. Please, yes, people. please. No, please, cons you please consult doctor and get a hearing aid because I said that I'm forgetting his name. You probably missed that part and you are uh, interpreting this as an insult. Anyway, I did not intend to insult. Mr. Kartik Maharaj, allegation against him is that he said that he will not allow TMC poll agent in his constituency. And for this reason, Mamta Banerjee publicly said, taking his name, that this is happening. And she said, well, for, for some or few uh, people from these organizations. She did not, blab, um, uh, you know, say, uh, utter any blanket statement against all these organizations. These organizations are very well respected and very, very well connected with the government of Bengal as well as with the with Mamata Banerjee personally. So, so there is no, uh, there is okay. that amount of confidence that she can make this statement. No, that come, Ka Ka you, Kamru you, Chaudhary, may, you are free. I'll, I'll give, you are free I, I, I got, I got, I got to take a break. I, I'm, I'm getting the final word. Kamru Chaudhary, the, the states that are left, you have Punjab that's going to polls, uh, Bengal, a few more seats are going to polls in the, in the, in the last two phases. 425 seats, I think, have already gone to polls. In the Both seats that are remaining, another 120 odd. You know. If these contradictions are going to come out every single day, and, and like I said at the top of the show, it's not just between TMC and Congress. In this case, it's within Congress, within two very senior leaders of the Congress party. Then what messaging and what, you know, this thing, are you going to the people in the remaining 120 constituencies to say that, okay, this is the coalition that's going to take on Mr. Modi? No, Zaka, you are much senior journalist. You have must have been covering Congress politics since I, when I was entered, I've entered politics. You, uh, there was a differences of opinion between uh, uh, yeah, Adiranjan Chaudhary and our Anand Sharma ji also earlier. That was in the public domain also. But still then, both of them are still working within the Congress party to strengthen the Congress party. Here, Kharge ji is our president, national president. Adiranjan Chaudhary is fighting his own okay. fight in West Bengal. No, no, what about the Congress no TMC war of words has been going on? It's been going on since the start of this campaign. Now, it will go on. It will go on because as a Congress worker from the grassroots in West Bengal, we cannot accept Mamta Banerjee to be allying with us. That's the final word. So, so people, people should just accept that you guys are frenemies till June 4th. And if a situation arises post June 4th, then you will become friends. Right now, you are no, not. Zaka, 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 you are mistaking everything out here. BJP aligned with the TMC, BJP aligned with the TDP also. BJP aligned with numerous parties which are enemies to the BJP right now. So, okay. uh, politics is a game of endless possibilities. Okay, it Here certainly does seem like uh, very confused endless possibilities as well, may I add. But we'll leave it at that. Thank you very much uh, to all our guests. We'll see. I think Bengal is going to be a test case of all this political calculation and whether these contradictions uh, will make the alliance sort of self-implode or whether people are willing to see beyond these contradictions and whether this, this logic of propping up the Congress and the left actually benefits Mamata Banerjee or uh, benefits the BJP. We'll see how that will play out. Like I said, we will know the empirical hard data, hard evidence on the 4th of June.